Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Crucified. Amen. There was a man who was suffering terribly. He had seen any number of doctors and he had countless tests. He had a medicine cabinet filled with pills. He was drinking herbal tea and he was taking all kinds of vitamins and his neighbor told him that he knew a doctor who helped him and so many people. And so he made an appointment. And when the doctor examined the man and reviewed all of these tests, she sat down and she said, you are not a healthy man. But we can get you well again if you follow my instructions. You need to lose 60 pounds. You need to exercise and I'm going to give you a diet that I want you to keep that includes grains and fruit and vegetables. And you don't need to take any of that medicine you have in all those pills, but bottles. And you don't need all of those vitamins either. Well, the man became angry and he demanded to have some prescription. He insisted to have something that will make him feel better, even if it was experimental. And the doctor smiled and repeated one more time, you can be healthy, but you need to change the way you live. And the man became furious. He walked out of the doctor's office and slammed the door behind him. And from the rest of his life, his sickly life, he was telling everyone, what a hoax this doctor was and that she shouldn't even have a license to practice. There was a woman who got in trouble with the law. She had run up all kinds of debts and in order to pay her debts, she started to embezzle from the company she worked for. They discovered the embezzlement and they brought charges against her. She was using the money to buy booze. And in fact, when she had been arrested many times on a DUI, but now this last time, a pedestrian was killed. A friend told her about an attorney who seldom lost a case. And so she agreed to go see him. And she walks in and she said what her story was, and I want you to get all these charges dropped. Having heard her story, the attorney says to her, what you did is wrong. You're going to have to spend some time in prison. And after you are released, you will need to go into a recovery program. You'll need to get a job, and you'll need to repay the company that employed you all that you embezzled from them. And if you do all of this, you will get your life back again. And the woman was furious. I don't need you to give me a lecture. I need you to get me out of this situation and get these charges removed and dropped. And so she started a letter campaign to get this lawyer disbarred for refusing to help the client.
There was a nation that was deeply troubled. For centuries, people had been controlling this country from afar, and it seemed to be hopeless. And they had now started to turn on themselves, friend against friend. There were a few reform movements along the way, but all of them had failed. And the people wanted just somebody to come and fix it all for them. They wanted a Messiah who would throw the oppressors out and establish peace and prosperity here at home. And after years, centuries of waiting, a man came on the scene who called people to love one another and to forgive one another. He healed sick people. He fed hungry people. He even provided the best wine for the wedding reception and lots of it. And he became angry with those who exploited the poor and the frail. And he could hold his own in an argument with the scribes and the Pharisees. Some people saw this man and decided that he was the one that was going to save the nation. That he was the one who was going to put everything right, that he was the one who would get rid of these Roman oppressors. He will fix everything, political, economic, religious. And one day this man comes riding into the capital city on a donkey. And they put their coats and their cloaks and cut branches for, to prepare the path for him. And shouted out, Hosanna to the son of David. And we're ready to make you our king. That was on Sunday. But by Monday, everything was going downhill. Jesus didn't recruit any army. People were disappointed. A few days later they became angry. They didn't get what they wanted from him. They filled the streets but this time they were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. He was offering exactly what they needed, but they rejected him. This one, who they thought would be their Messiah, was nailed to a cross and became an abomination according to the law of Moses. Everyone deserted him, except for Mom and his best friend, John, at the foot of the cross, weak. The world has a history of denouncing and sometimes killing those who offer what we really need because it's not easy. We want a lapdog Messiah who will do what we want. We want a God who blesses our greed and our selfishness. The world does not want this Messiah, or that doctor, or that attorney, because 
what they offer is not quick and easy. That is what happened between Palm Sunday and Good Friday. When Jesus was taking on every fear, every hate, every false expectation, and even death itself, the temporary delight and the shallow religion of Palm Sunday is exactly what crucified him and buried him in that tomb. But it was for our sake that all this happened, that true trust will be raised in their hearts, in our hearts, by the resurrection victory of Easter. All we need to do is to surrender our false expectations and our selfish hope. But that is hard to do. So watch Jesus this week and those offering advice to him about what he should do as we watch the virus this week and listen to many voices telling us what we should do, as we watch Jesus and the world around us, ask yourself, who will be offering the easy way out what we want to hear? And who will be offering the difficult way what we really need to hear? Amen.